Welcome to Dynamite Download, everyone. Your home for all positive coverage of AEW All Elite Wrestling. My name is SPD, and we have Crayfish, and we are joined by the one and only Danny Limelight. Danny, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Mi gente, what's going on, baby? Thank you guys so much. SPD, Crayfish, thank you guys for having me on your show. It's Monday. It's a beautiful day out here in sunny California, and man... It must suck to be in Michigan right now. <laughs> yeah, it does. And it sucks that I don't have that sweet shirt, man. That shirt is oh, sick, man. dude. I that love is. That. All my shirts are available on ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight. That is a <laughs> sick shirt. Nice, too, man. Bro. I, for real, you. man. Yeah. We haven't seen that the, one before. One of my, this is one of my older shirts, man. This was back in 2016. Nice. nice. So you, yeah. it's it's only like it's only getting better, Danny. You, Danny's got a, a lot of awesome merch, man. I appreciate yeah, you uh, getting that plug in. We'll make sure too to get Danny's handles in here too. You want to oh, follow yeah. Danny on social? This dude is amazing to his fans. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram at Danny Limelight. ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight. Cameo.com backslash Danny Limelight. We got oh, that out the way. You know where to find me. You know where to buy my stuff. That's right, right, baby. Do it. That's, That's right, right yes. son. Love that, man. <laughs> well, first and foremost, yeah, thank you for joining us. I want to say thank you for your service as well, man. It, you know, to, to sacrifice it all for everyone to keep us safe and protected. I mean, we can only say thank you so much. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And um, from the bottom of our hearts, so thank you so much for that. Uh, so, like, like Crayfish said, you know, we here at Diamond Eye Diamond, we keep things positive and uplifting and uplifting others. And every time you're on the screen, the commentators and the wrestlers always just have so much great stuff to say about you, that you're oh. such a genuine person. That's what really drew us to you, just like your charisma on screen and your amazing in-ring ability. You know, uh, so it's an honor to chat with you. So I know you've had a fascinating journey as a human overall. Like, before you became Danny Limelight, you know, like where did you grow up and what was it like growing up? Man, I, I was Daniel Rivera, uh, <laughs> born in Brooklyn, New York on September 2nd. You know, I'm a Virgo, uh, nice. Puerto Rican, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just grew up wilding out in the streets, having a good time. You know, early years I played baseball and boxed and things nice. like that. And I, I I used to love playing manhunt, running around, <laughs> yeah. you know, and stuff like that, man. <laughs> Um, and then, as I, most people know, man, I joined the military at 17 years old. Wow. Served wow. 10 years, went all over the place, and, you know, got into wrestling and found my passion. Wow. That's incredible. Man. I mean, we just celebrated you yesterday, Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York, and it was, yeah. uh, saw some photos and stuff. So it looked. I'm glad I wasn't there. I know. It's always a huge <laughs> parade, and I know they're not technically doing parades yet and stuff but i know i've, I've been it was uh two years ago went down with okay. it with some friends and it was it was fantastic yep. love puerto rico you know one of my yeah. favorite spots to travel to uh, crayfish and i have both have been there it is beautiful a beautiful place, beautiful man. place people, for people, sure. people don't who haven't been there don't realize how beautiful it is man it yeah, is gorgeous i went for yes. the first time in april man i went out there to wrestle in april for a spirit to dojo um, and I taught a seminar out there, and it was just dope, wow. man. It's real good care of me. I was out there for five days. Got wow. to see the island and food and all that, man. Oh. It was grass, bro. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. I could see it, too. <laughs> dude. I could see that. Even though you're in Cali right now, you're you're missing it, dude. That is funny. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's beautiful out here. Don't get me wrong. I love Cali, but, man, yeah. it's different being on that beach. No doubt. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you like you just said, a lot of you've dabbled in a lot of stuff. And I mean, you're amazing. Um, the military, martial arts, stuntman, you know, pro wrestling. Like, when did it first click saying, like, I wanted to be a pro wrestler? You know, what? when did that first come about? When I was a kid, I wanted to do it, man. I got okay. me as a kid, championship belts and stuff like that. I used to <laughs> wrestle with my action figures. I used to, you know, we never, my dad never really got me like wrestling figures, but I had a wrestling ring. <laughs> and I had a whole bunch of like Marvel action figures, like Spider Man, Wolverine. So I had like my own little wrestling sense. federation that I would just have, like, you know, all these guys come out and wrestle and I would like write stories and stuff like that, you know? Yep. Um, I watched 97 hmm. Bad Blood. That's like the first memory I have of watching it on TV and just fell in love with it, man. I wanted to do it. My teacher said I couldn't, that I couldn't make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. um, Boy, Showed them. They were wrong, you know. Yo, absolutely. I kind of stopped watching wrestling when I went into towards like junior high school, high school days, and then when I came back into it, you know, I, I just opened my eyes to a world of wrestling because all I knew as a kid was WWF. I didn't know about you know New Japan or Ring of Honor or Impact, any of that stuff. So when when I started wrestling, that's when I really got to find out about all the wrestling that there was and the indies and stuff. So it's been it's been fun the last few seven years. Yes, almost seven years now since I started wow. wrestling. Wow. 
it doesn't feel that long because I took a two year break and you know I was on and off when I was in the military. But these last hmm. three years, I've kind of hit it consistently. It's been so much fun. That's amazing, man. I mean, like I, we we were like the fandom as a kid is something, but to be able to like go through the journey you've gone through and then somehow mm-hmm. come back to that childhood dream to now live that, bro. Like when you were yeah. a kid, you were 17 years old. You were a kid yeah. and you became a man real quick. Yes. And now you get to live out that childhood dream as your life, bro. Like that is, that's amazing, man. I'm, it's, I'm uh, it's sometimes it doesn't feel real, you know, like when I'm in or when the crowds are cheering for me or people want to do interviews or, you know, even when I'm on set acting, things that I wanted to do as a kid, I always imagined myself being on TV, you know, like I always wanted to do that. Like I always felt like I belonged in the limelight. And now that I get to do that, it's, man, I never, I never take it for granted, bro. No, I could tell too, man. Your interactions with people on social, um, like I said at the beginning, dude, you are, you are genuinely cool to everybody you meet. You can, t- I can just man, tell that. But- man, look, man. I never forget where I come from. I never let any of this shit get to my head. I spread love. That's the Brooklyn way. I hate haters. Mm-hmm. Love that. Um, and when people talk to me like, "Why well, am I gonna be a dick for? What do I get out of it?" You know yep. what I'm saying? Exactly. Love- this shit is I- black. You know. We're we're gonna we're gonna like- steal that. I I hate haters. That's gonna be part. We are <laughs> we're very positive here. That on a shirt. I yes, you sure. Yes, Matter sir. Fact, shout out to my homie Fred Ross. A block the hate. We we ain't got no time for none of that shit around right here. That's right. With you, man, like. My daughter, she's in she's in entertainment. She's on commer- national commercials, McDonald's, cereal. Amazing. Movie. She's in short films. She got films going up to film festivals right now. She's in the entertainment industry. So if I'm running around here acting like a damn fool or a dick and, and being mean to people for no reason, that's just going to tell her that it's okay to do that. And I don't want to set that example for her. That's well great. Said. Fantastic. Well, well said. It. And honestly, as all as young men, like – more young men need to look at life that like that way. Like, yeah. let's set the example for like the youngsters out there. Like, Facts. don't don't allow that in your life, and it won't enter theirs. I mean, Facts. that that's a beautiful thing, man. I, honestly, like with a life like you've had, you have to have nerves of steel. To me, like you're like yeah. nothing could rattle you, but like you said, you mentioned you have to almost pinch yourself sometimes with where you're at in your life. Yeah. Can you take it like as an AEW guy? Us, we love the AEW. We love hearing. When we get a rare opportunity like this to talk to somebody who's in it, Danny, it's real cool to us to be able to. What was it like getting that opportunity? What was it like getting that call? Man, honestly, bro, like the first time, like I really felt that feeling was when I made my Impact debut, right? In 2019, I wrestled in the Impact pay per view, it was my debut for the Exhibition Championship, right? And um, when I got called, I was going to be on that. I was nervous. I was excited, you know, all of the mm-hmm. above. And then when I seen I was wrestling for the championship, I was like, man, this is insane, you know? Wow. Yep. And then I, I felt that feeling again, but a little bit more when New Japan hit me up, you know? Mm. When I came out for the New Japan tryout and then I came out and made my debut, you know, stepped into that Cerulean Blue against TJ Perkins at Lions Break Collision. That was another moment for me where I'm like, holy shit, like I'm doing this, you know? And I'm wrestling with <laughs> the best in the world, you know? Absolutely. And then a few months later, you know, I might even go lie. When that happened, I was like, man, it, it ain't going to get no bigger than this. Like, I'm, I'm right. wrestling and strong, you know? Like, then boom, here comes AEW, you know, that, that I, got, I was fortunate enough to get contact wow. with. And I came out and made my debut. And then just to be able to be a consistent player on that show for like mm-hmm. the last eight months almost, mm-hmm. man, it's a blessing, you know? Never know when your last match is going to be, but fuck, hmm. dude. I enjoy it every single time I step into those ropes at any place I was at. That's a, that's awesome, man. I love that. You know, like I mean, it's cool that you mentioned impact and and you mentioned sort of like getting your big break there, mm-hmm. man. There are so many great talents that have spilled over from impact to AEW, and, and I'm already like I'm like Santana and Ortiz are two proud Puerto Ricans from Brooklyn. Huge, right. huge fans of them. We are on the PMP train, man. man. Oh man, love them. Dumb dudes are real, man. It don't get no real than them. Those were the first dudes like when I got to AEW that really showed me love. That's that was, great. That's that's fantastic, man. I, I had a feeling like that's family, right? Like that's just like that, right? And like so we wanted to kind of get like just the back behind the scenes, Danny, getting into AEW. Like it was it was Santana Ortiz. Anybody else that you feel like you, yeah. know, you, you click with or maybe you bounce stuff off of that yeah, man. Like- uh Ray Phoenix, that's my oh. That's my, like, Manito. I've known him mm-hmm. for, like, years, though. You know, I met him in 2016 at, at the Indy <laughs> in San Diego. Damn, man. Yeah. I've, known, I've known him for years. That's, we go out. We go drinking, you know, have some, smoke some hookah, <laughs> eat good. We'll be out in LA, man. Shoot. How do we get into that circle, man? man. That is sick. <laughs> Your own inner circle. Phoenix is one of my boys. 
Nice. Ty Conti, she's a good friend of mine. Love nice. Ty, she's awesome. Um, who else is a good, a good like somebody? You know, the Bear Country. Nice. Those are the boys, they're cool right. goals. Brian Pillman Jr. is another good dude. Um, Eddie Kingston. So yeah. He's, yeah. he's more like know? Uncle Eddie, you know. And Uncle believe Eddie. it, another one of my good friends, somebody that I like spending time with, man, is Jake Hager. So oh, nice, nice. Dude, man. Him and Jerry Lynn, two of my two people that I, nice. I love, man. Jerry Lynn's a is a legend, man. Somebody that aside from just being a good person that I I come to for like critique and information, and I want all the golden nuggets he could drop me. You know, everybody I name the people that I like, I I, I hold near and dear. I, I I love hearing that because you're you're just name dropping people after people. I'm like, yeah. man, would it be cool to just kick it with like Jer- to like being as a guy like me? I loved ECW as a teenager, right? Just yeah. love that and like being able to just kick it with Jerry Lynn and bounce ideas off of that, dude. That is amazing, man. man. Even even like another person I bounce ideas off of is Dean Link. That's another dude. Oh, that's- gosh. oh gosh, man, with all the holes, right? The yeah. game itself is just it's it's crazy, you know. So unbelievable. One of the most underrated, like, uh, or now he was at the time and during his peak, I feel like he was underappreciated. Now we look back and we're like, man, Dean Malenko was the truth. Like yeah, that dude was... could dominate in the ring. Absolute yep. technician. Love that, man. That's really Jeez. cool. That is, that is awesome. Quite the inner circle. And I mean, we've had the lucky opportunity to talk to some other AW stars and everyone, the consistent narrative is family, family, family. Everyone's looking out for each other as a whole. It's not yep. me trying to be the top guy or gal and you below me. It's everyone like pushing each other, uplifting others. Iron sharpens iron. We always say it on our show. That's and our that's, that's what we're, we're seeing it and hearing it from you. It's absolutely great. Now that you've been, you know, working at AW for Eight, eight-ish months now, and you were the first face debuted on ADO Dark Elevation. The first debut, the first entrance. That's got to be awesome. And an uh, awesome history, match at Jungle Boy. That is history. That Daddy is Lime a Mike. resume. That's a, like a headliner on a resume. Son. of an AEW yes, debut show with yeah. Paul White on commentary and Tony Schiavone on commentary. I mean, come on. That doesn't get better than that. Poppy. <laughs> So Man, I'm, super, I'm super grateful for that opportunity to come out. The crowd was there. Yeah, you know, I had met Paul White years before that. Mm. You know, just being able to have him on commentary with Tony Schiavone, uh, you know, wrestling Jungle Boy, another SoCal guy. Yeah, um, and just being that first face to come off of Elevation, so that first match, being on the 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 opening intro and stuff yes. like that. Man, just that's been, awesome. Monday Night Limelight is what I was calling it, man. It's, it's, it's <laughs> yep. dry, dude. I, I you well deserved. I mean, the hard work was paying off. You've you've shared the ring with some of the absolute greatest in the industry today. No doubt. And I mean, K, the cage match. We were t- talking to you. You know, Ray Phoenix and you know Jungle Boy. Who haven't you wrestled that you'd want to wrestle in AEW? Whether it be singles or even a tag. Like if you wanted to tag with someone wow. to face a tag team. Oh, what are man. some dream matches in AEW? So I'm gonna go ahead and say that singles. I, I want. I would love to wrestle Kenny Omega one on one. But I've, I've been able to wrestle him twice now in tag matches. Yep. Um, Pac is another one that's on my list. That's Crayfish's that's, number one guy my, is Pac. Yeah, dude, dude I love me some Pac, bro. Yeah, I want to wrestle Pac one on one. You guys Ooh. would be sick together too. As yeah. a Pac fanboy, I would love that match. Dude, Pac, Sign Pac, me Pac, up. Pac is the man, bro. It's another good dude. <laughs> Someone I really respect. Someone that I would actually go to talk to him about dieting, fitness. His his fitness routine is insane, bro. Dude's a specimen. Um, Can't even imagine. Who else? Somebody I want to wrestle. Tag team man. The Young Bucks, obviously, you know, I would love to wrestle the Young Bucks. The Lucha Bros would be insane. Yeah. Um, there's so many good, proud and powerful, even though I wrestled them before, but like, yeah. with, you know, John Cruz at the time, I would like to yeah. wrestle like an actual partner. Right. Um, they're great. Damn, so many tag teams. In, in yeah. That, but those are the top three off the top of my head. That's um, great. If I had I mean, to pick a partner. Yeah. Shit. That's a hard question. Fuck. Even if you stole someone away from another tag team, like to well, make you know your dream what? tag team. And, and what if I was able, like, what if it was a possibility where the forbidden door was open and Tom Lawler could come through? And then we could Deep, do Deep filthy. Deep filthy, and we son. Filthy Tom Lawler and the filthy poppy Danny Limelight against whoever, you know? Or I even would be Kratos. all for that, man. Great to walk with you, man. Listen, for those of you that don't know, my New Japan works some of my best work. I Yo. love the team filthy. Um, we some we some some bad dudes, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. Crazy mother, you know what I'm saying? We'll fight dream, like my boy Tom says. So that would be somebody I would like to pull over. Um, or we could go ahead and we could throw, you know, throw the bodega into the mix with Slice Boogie and Papo Esco, you know, current United Wrestling Network tag team champions. But if I had to pick somebody from AEW. 
on the I'm spot. Gonna to, I'm gonna try to pick somebody who's not in a tag team. Okay. Sure. Hmm. SPD, you got him it's thinking, hard. dude. I know. You got yeah. him thinking. Because like, like it's I, like, like pitching, picking your starting pitcher. It's hard sometimes. I would have said yeah. Pac, but Pac teams with Phoenix and teams with Penta. But that'd know? be great. And oh he's teams with Moxley. Um, One guy. Do you like someone to wrestle? Andrade. Oh, Andrade. Andrade. Oh, there you go. Ooh, that would be the be, person I would pick. Now, now Danny, in, in typical limelight fashion, you get that you got the hottest new signing. <laughs> You're a smart man, Danny. You're a smart. We'll man. do a Latino thing with Vicky or something. I don't know. I yeah. like that. Two poppies taking over everything. That and would you totally got the work. swagger to match, bro. I like that. Get I like that a, a lot. Yeah, get yourself yeah, got, a suit. I got suits. I got yeah. suits closet, man. Nice swagger for sure. The now, thing I, is, yeah, go ahead. I was say, I love. I mean. You guys would have such great in-ring style. I love your in-ring style. Fits AEW's mold so well. High energy, intense, always unique, showing us something different every single time. That's why I love the Ray Phoenix match that you had. Mm -hmm. uh, was fantastic. And yeah. <laughs> just the, the chops oh. on the rope. Yeah. I mean, your rope top rope maneuvers are unbelievable and just always on the edge of your seat. So yeah. props to that. That is obviously extremely difficult. And this dude walks the ropes yeah. like, like, he's, like it's nothing. It's so sweet. Do whatever a spider can. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's the radioactive part of the radioactive poppy. That makes <laughs> sense. I like that. So I got to ask, though, in AEW, who has the hardest chops that you've ever taken? I know Ray Phoenix has got some killer chops. Phoenix. Even Evil Uno. Phoenix does? For sure. <laughs> That's a quick answer, bro. Like yeah. he is like the master at chops. I thought Penta had some mean ones, but when I was yeah. on Ray like, throw I've some, taken, I've taken some Penta chops on the Indies. That, but for me, it's gonna be <laughs> man, that guy well, is that, unbelievable. That solves the debate. I, right. I, I, we've yeah. had that debate so many times Penta here. Or Ray. Penta, Ray Kingston. There we, but thank you, Danny. Thank yeah. you uh, for taking the beating for us and giving. <laughs> I took the stride for y'all. Jump <laughs> I appreciate that, man. No, I, I mean it, it's so cool. Like you mentioned, like Team Filthy, man. I was I was hoping we could squeeze that in there because in, in, in New J in New Japan, man. Like I I know we're AW centered podcast, but Danny, you are starting to get some real like leg work going and some vibes going on some tag work. And I think the cool thing for me is just seeing like that is such a I I love tag team wrestling. That's my jam. I, that's my thing, right? Your style to me, like we're talking about dream opponents and dream tag of team tag, like all that stuff. Your style is so like you are the glue. And that's what I like to talk wow. about. Like there are guys that are, that are, you put them in any, I was talking to SPD before the interview, like Swiss, Swiss army knife, whatever you want to say, this is the type of guy you throw him in any situation with any type of competitor at any different type of style. And he's going to make it work. And I, and I think that that's something you pride yourself on. Can you tell us a little bit about like that mentality? Because you are a smaller guy who could just do one thing and fit a niche, but you don't do that. I Yeah, man. When I first started, I was just flying around the ring. You know, like I was in the indies, diving, jumping, bumping, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But like I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, man, I could do everything. Like, I can do everything that everybody else does, but I could do it myself. You know, Beautiful. like. I have the martial arts background. I have the boxing background. I have the parkour background. I have the, you know what I'm saying? The tough guy background. Yeah, tough the, guy. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like, I have the upbringing in the streets. Like, I have the the the, 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 the freaking, the, the history of street fights from back in the day. Like, I have all of that stuff, man. And I, I've trained Lucha with some of the best luchadors in the world. You know, I've learned from the best luchadors by wrestling them. You know, wrestling guys like Phoenix and, yep. and to, you know, SoCal Crazy, Mariachi Loco, Little Cholo, from, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can name for days, you know. I've been in the ring with the John Moxley's, the Kenny Omega's. I've been in the ring with the Matt Seidel's, the Rocky Romero's, the Fred Rossers. There's, I've been in the wow. ring with the best of the best of the best of the best, man. I, I know. The that I take pride in myself is that you're right. I can strike. I can grapple. I can wrestle. I can fly. I can lucha. You know what I'm saying? I could do all of it. I, I, and I like the fact that you could take me and go, let's put him with this guy. And you know it's going to be a match that's more than likely going to steal the show. And that, yep. that's what I try to do every time I go into the ring. I try to do something that's going to leave the crowd wanting more. I try to show something different every time. My mind I is do. so innovative. I always try to switch something up. You won't ever see yep. a stick match for me. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, and then I have the charisma. You guys haven't even, like, I haven't even been able to grab a microphone yet at AEW. Yep. 
you know what I'm saying? And for those that watch me on New Japan, my mouth is like my best, my best <laughs> trick. You know what I'm saying? That's my, I know. Like, like pause, but like my, the way I talk, like I could, I have the silver tongue, bye bye. Like I could talk for days. So like, <laughs> do all of that, man. I, I love it. I love the fact that you can put me in any situation at any time, at any place, anywhere, any city, any state, any yeah. country. And I'm gonna do what it do because I'm the radioactive father. That's Man, right. you just killed it right there, dude. That was and a promo a right there. You, you, I mean, that he's spit, he's spitting facts, and you know facts. that's why it comes out so easy because it's true. Right. Um, I mean that that's what I love. That's why, I, like, when he got this interview with you, man. I thought, like, man, this is an opportunity for us to help try to break that mold and let man, this you guy. Put that part right there, and that's got to be the first thing that goes out, man. Fuck you that. got it. It'll be, it'll it'll be it. Right it. Tweet it. Yes, sir. We will. Yes, we'll sir. Send. That's going I love out. That. <laughs> and you just talked about like wait until wait until you get to see more of than just the tip of the iceberg. Yep. Wait till I get a mic in my hand. Wait till I get a feud going in AEW. Wait till I get or my anywhere. Right. or anywhere or anywhere. Right. Right. For those that I'm sorry, it's a plan. But for those that watch me <laughs> on New Japan Strong, you seen my feud with Rocky Romero when I turned on Rocky. How that went when mm -hmm. I joined Team Filthy. When we threw Chris Chris Dickinson out of the thing, you guys, you know what I'm saying? I guess yep. you do more there. When you watch Man United Wrestling Network with the Bodega Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, you get to see me on the microphone every week before a match, after a match with Bob right. Olasco and Slice Boogie, letting everybody know you can get anything you need in the Bodega, including a beatdown. You know, so <laughs> man, love it. But the wrestling was was that part of it. Like The Rock was my favorite because when he had a microphone in his hand, I wanted to hear what he had to say. Yo, that's what made me want to watch. When Eddie Guerrero was in the ring doing all these having oh. amazing matches, he still was talking on the microphone. That promo to with Brock Lesnar before he won the WWE Championship back yep. then. To me, that's a that's a very important trait and skill to have that not a lot of wrestlers do. It's true. Absolutely. So I tell Absolutely. myself, you know, give me a chance in any company, any place, anywhere, a feud, whatever. Put a microphone in my hand. Let me talk. Let me do my thing, and it's gonna we're gonna make some jump. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then, and let's say someday my wrestling career is over, I don't mind sitting back as a manager. And managing the next highest upcoming Latino star who might need it, you know what I'm saying? Because a guy like you who can talk and has the, has the confidence to do it, and when you're at that stage of your career, brother, like you're gonna be a next level, right? Elevating people left and right, and you have the right mentality because you you've proven in your life that you are a leader, and so like I I, I love that, dude. I mean, with Rampage on the horizon, right? This is a new like for me. I look at you and you're like, all right, you put in the work. This is another platform. That's going to be another opportunity. And I feel like for somebody like you and where you're at, you are a guy who, as a fan, I'm pegging at this time next year because of this increased opportunity on TV, your star and your name is going to be a lot. It's going to grow, Danny. I, I, I genuinely believe that. I appreciate that, man. No problem, man. I, I mean that. And I, and I think with Rampage on the horizon, like you're talking about like, Give me these opportunities. What is what's a goal for you in the landscape of your career from now until next year? Because I know you're a very goal oriented person. What's yeah. a goal for you that you want to be able to look back on next year at this time and be like, all right, I did this. Man, last last year this time I was making my debut for New Japan, and I never thought it was gonna get bigger than that. And I didn't know that a year later it'd be like this, right? So wow. it's hard for me to set a goal now because every goal that I had last year I destroyed. <laughs> Love it. And some, you know what I'm saying? I got a movie right now in post production that's that's almost done. It's gonna be going to film festivals. So I wanna be taking some time to really like shift my attention towards the acting and stuff like that, getting that film pushed out, trying to do more things in the film industry. I got my daughter, she's busting her butt, working or knocking out auditions and callbacks. So in a year from now, I wanna, you know, I wanna be on a TV show or in a film, a big blockbuster film. Nice. Rest of life, I wanna keep doing what I'm doing, I wanna keep grinding. I want to keep, you know, having the best matches possible, whether it's at AEW or New Japan or United Wrestling Network or any other company, Ring of Honor, Impact, WWE, whatever, you know, MLW, AAA. I'm, I'm open. You know what I'm saying? I'm a free right. agent. True. So I can go anywhere and do anything and wrestle anybody. Right. I want to I want to wrestle at PWG. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to hit all those big places that I didn't get a chance to hit before. But yeah. after breaking out of the pandemic, now I have a chance this next year to really turn it up to the next level. And there's going to be plenty of wrestling, plenty of opportunities coming on the pipeline. And just like I always listen to myself, man, I don't need to hit a home run. TJ Perkins told me, Danny, you don't need to hit a home run. All you got to do is take the walk, get on base, steal home, and shock the fucking crowd. And that's exactly <laughs> what I'm going to do when I get the chance to. I love that's that. That's great, man. Man, I got to talk to TJ too, man. That, that, that <laughs> is the man, man. Shout out to yeah. TJP. Shout out to Aria Blake. Good luck on the, you know, the baby that's coming soon. You know what I'm saying? Much blessings to them. 
TJP is a mentor of mine, a good friend of mine. I got mad love for that dude. That's fantastic, dude. That's great. And good. things are turning up. I mean, we're we're trying to get down to, to see AW live again. We saw him back in uh, February at yeah. Dailies, and just because our work schedule, you know, our, we got on schedule all out, you know, all out. Maybe we're uh, in Chicago. It's great that you, the touring has started back up. Fans are Danny's back. Danny's right though. People are going to be chomping at the bit to come to wrestling, right? I know I mean, that's the truth. He knows it. He he knows it. Danny's. Well, you heard it. Up. Yeah. How was that? Yeah. Seeing, listening to the fans and performing in front of the fans for the first time after a long hiatus. Oh. Man, wrestling, wrestling. You know, Evil Uno. Bro. Bro, he's great. All of Dark Order is super talented, but Evil Uno is definitely underrated. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. We agree. We were just discussing that. <laughs> we were just discussing that on our show. Talented, like, man. yeah. And just being able to wrestle him and hearing the crowd pop when my when my theme hit me, and hearing yeah. the crowd pop, I didn't wasn't sure if I was gonna get it or not. It felt pretty great, man. Shout out to Mikey Ruckus and Blast for creating the track. Oh I, I man, it's talented. Talented. I said I want the big pun vibes. I want the you know the street vibes, the Boricua vibes, and they gave me all of that, man. I love that theme song. Yo. So, you know, it was fun, man. Just the crowd was hot, the match was fun, and, and I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, we can't wait to see you do it again. And I gotta before we do our quick fast five, there's just five random questions. Yo. Gotta ask, where did the radioactive poppy nickname come from? Or oh, did man, you give it to yourself, people, or did someone give it to you? A lot of people's been asking this, but I definitely <laughs> gifted it to myself. I love it. <laughs> but it was a, a mix of of who i am you know the radioactive obviously came from spider-man you know the mm -hmm. radioactive spider the genes the radioactive genealogy and then the poppy you know what i'm saying that came from being a puerto rican poppy you know what i'm saying i'm a father I'm handsome i'm charming you know but also <laughs> i think of eddie guerrero, you know eddie guerrero used to come on and say i'm your poppy i'm your poppy so put that radioactive poppy Made it original, made it mine. Love Come it. out, do my little dance, sprinkle my little sasson, <laughs> pop in the ring. Love it, <laughs> absolutely love it. And you know, I got some, I got some ink on my arms and stuff, but nothing like yours. Oh man, you know, everybody gotta, wants to hear about Danny's tattoo. Yeah, man. what is the story behind the "I am Groot" tattoo? A lot of yeah. our fans are asking about it. You know, I'm a big Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy fan as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well so well, what's what's the story bro. behind that one? Uh, Groot is a Marvel character for the Guardians of the Galaxy. He can only say I and M and Groot strictly in that order. Um, yeah. But it means anything at any time. So for me, that was True. my motivational quote. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, I, I like that. I look in the mirror. One day it's, you know, every day is the opportunity to change your life. The next day is fuck bitches get money. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it, 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 could, be, it could be anything, you know? So it, it just depends. It depends on the mood. It depends right. on the day. And that's why. <laughs> Man, I was right about to be like, cut you off and be like, damn, Danny, you are a deep dude. And then you go, fuck bitches and get money. <laughs> I love it. I'm bro. just kidding. Oh, I'm just I know. Kidding. I, uh, oh, dude, yeah. it's all good, man. No, but that, <laughs> that makes oh, sense. Dude, I mean, good, I, I like it. That That is funny. <laughs> He's the poppy, baby. Come that's on. Right. That's where that came from, you know. Um, and then, you know, I got the limelight tattoo on my arm. I got. Yep. Drone instructor tattoo here. I got the mm. spider symbol on my chest for obvious reasons. Yeah, you know, you're a real I, life Spider Man. I got, you know, my daughter's tattoo right here is a dragon with an egg on her birthday and the, the year mm. she was born and stuff like that. Her name, um, New York like City. That. I got, you know, another Lion King over here. Each character represents something special and important to me in my life, you know, similar to the role yeah. they played in the film Lion King. It's mm -hmm. the same concept with me. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. A lot of my tattoos are weird, funny, crazy, whatever. But right. when I got them, they meant something to me. Um, and yeah, they hit for, for life. And yeah, they mean, yeah, it doesn't man. matter what it is or what anyone thinks about them. If it means something to you, man, exactly. Yeah, I got like, yeah. Man, I just want to drop some knowledge for anybody listening. You know, it doesn't matter anybody else. None of that. All that matters is if you're happy. All that matters is that you're good. I always tell myself if they're not fucking you, feeding you, or paying your bills, their opinion don't matter. So. It is what it is. Man. I love how real you are, brother. That's true. Words of wisdom from Danny Limelight. Love. That's, that's, that's actually true. One of the, that's one and of the I like the course. block hate you were doing too, man. That's Fred Rossa, baby. That's Fred Rossa. I like it. Formerly known as Darren Young, man. I love that, dude. I, I, I love. Do. I love the that. Like, he calls himself the Suntan Superman now. Fun <laughs> fact: Fred Rossa. I was his first friend at New Japan, right? And uh, block the hate was his thing, right? And he was on my IG live one time, and another fan. Was on was commenting. He's like, "Man, Fred Ross, man, that's the suntan Superman right there," and it stuck. <laughs> so I like it. Suntan Superman came straight from the limelight into the limelight. Wow! There so, you go. Shout out to Fred Ross. I love that dude, man. That's like, awesome, dude. man. 
doing some of the best work in his career right now in New Japan Strong. So shout out to Fred. That's awesome. There's some great I, dude, stories. I, I love I, hearing all this. I love hearing just Danny just genuinely like you could tell, you, dude. You just like seeing people like good things happen for people. Yeah, man. Right? I always tell myself I'm gonna clap for everybody else until it's my turn to be clapped for. I've never been a sure. hater. I hate that shit. I love I that mentality, Danny. I love hate the haters at Dynamite Download. We're gonna start putting that out there too, guys. I love Absolutely. that, Danny. Absolutely. Appreciate that. All right, love and SPD, positivity. break out the wrap it up. Let's get into the fast five. Your your signature segment, buddy. This is. Well, I had to style. adjust one on the fly because we already took one of the ones yeah. away. But all right, so yeah. fast five. So the first one is uh, an arena you haven't hold performed on, hold on. it. Oh, so yeah. fast five. Yeah. Yeah. That means you got five more sequels coming after that or what? <laughs> no, no five quick fast questions. questions. Fast questions. Yeah, but but Danny, anytime if you want to get back yeah. in the fast five, you're here. We fast love it. They just keep making movies, man. <laughs> yeah, we're at yeah, nine. I yeah, can see wow. you in that. I hope get you one yeah. day, man. There right. you go. We're talking. I like it. it now. I want to be in fast ten. I'm yeah, put, the put that in the universe. Let's man. tag John Cena it'll, it'll on be, this. It'll be called Fast X, though. So. Uh, okay. Ooh, already bringing it, right? Already bringing style to it, Danny. <laughs> already bring, bring it down. It, poppy styles. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. All, all right, right let's so, be getting so into this. All, right, all right, fast five. Let's go. Dream, uh, dream arena to perform in you haven't Madison performed in. Madison Square Garden. It. Ooh. The easy. pinnacle of all That's arenas. Easy. Right. Easy. All right, so radioactive poppy, yes. If you could have a superpower, what would it be that you don't already have? Oh, <laughs> uh, man, it would 100% be like all the powers that Wolverine have, for sure. Oh, Wolverine's That's powers. Okay. I've always loved his powers. Yeah, yeah. Is, that, that's Ooh. amazing, though. Yeah, Before Wolverine is great. All right. Does pineapple belong on pizza? No. Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn crowd right. right there. Pepperoni right. only, man. I don't yeah. pepperoni pizza. All right. All right. Hey, I had to ask being a New York pizza guy. You know, but right. I will say this. If I'm four or five Henny and Red Bulls deep, I'll eat a pineapple pizza. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. It's still pizza, though. Yeah, All right, uh, you're a man of many, many talents. Is there any hidden talents that people may not expect you to have, or that we don't know about? I like to, well, I like to write. Obviously, people are starting to learn that I'm a writer. Um, yeah. I do want to write a book one day. Um, nice. A lot of people don't know this. I don't know if it's a talent, but I dress up as Spider Man. I go to children's hospitals and see the sick kids, and then I That's go talent. to elementary schools and read to the special needs kids and stuff like that. I haven't been able to do it lately because the pandemic, but that was something that I was doing. Hmm. Um, another talent of mine. I'm really good at Call of Duty Warzone. Oh, all right. Yeah. He's laying it out there. Man, you are a diverse cat. SPD, no. what's the next one? All right. Well, it wasn't going to be your life motto or life lesson to live by, but you you nailed that with I am Groot. So yeah. to kind of keep it to like full circle, like any advice you give any young, inspiring wrestlers that want to get in the, in the business? Oh, man. It's, if they listen to this podcast all the way through bro like enough stuff in that they could pick from but yeah. more specifically when i talked about blocking the hate you know i'm stealing from fred rosser again like the haters are gonna hate people are gonna doubt you mm -hmm. but as long as you want it as bad as you want to breathe and you grind and you don't give up and you just put in the work it it's gonna happen for you things fall into motion when you work for it um, I read I read this like little story, this little motivational thing where there was this kid who was broke and bummy in the streets and he met a guy that was dressed in a nice suit and drove a Lamborghini. He wanted to know how he got so successful. And the guy said, meet me at the beach at 5 a.m. tomorrow. The kid showed up in his best clothes that he could afford. And the guy was in a ba pair of basketball shorts and a tank top and he went out into the water and told the kid follow him into the water. And deeper and deeper, the kid kept following him until the guy grabbed him by the head and put his head under the water and was drowning him. And then he pulled the kid's head up and the kid gasped for breath and pushed him off and said, what are you doing? And he said, you felt that? And he's like, I almost drowned. I couldn't breathe. He's like, yeah, and how bad did you want to breathe? He's like, I wanted to breathe bad. So if you want anything in life as bad as wow. you want to breathe, nothing's going to stop you. Hmm. If you're grinding. You, you're working on your craft. You're studying. You're staying true and authentic to who you are and not forgetting where you came from just because you get a little bit of clout on the Internet. You're going to be straight. Wow. Wow. That's that's giving me chills, man. That's awesome, man. I used to tell that story, I'm motivated. I used to tell that story all the time to my Marines, man, because obviously it wasn't wrestling related. We were related right. to combat situations and things like that, coming home and stuff like that. Right. That was that was one of the stories that I would tell my Marines all the time, you know. Wow. And that was, you know, there was another story that I had read about an old chief that was by the campfire, you know, telling a story to a young lad. And he's, you know, he was telling that every day there's a battle that goes inside everybody. You know what I'm saying? Two dogs fighting. One is happy, positive. 
You're passionate. One is grinding, working hard, praying for others, believing in others, clapping for others. The other one is angry, spiteful, envious, jealous, hatred, filled with anger and stuff like that. And the kid asked the high chief, said, you know, which one wins? And he says, the one that you feed the most the every day. Heard. Every day you got to make sure you feed that right person inside of you. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. If you're doing that, nothing's going to stop you but yourself. That's that that battle of the two dogs inside of you, the two wolves. That's that is that's something that connects on a on a real deep level, Danny. I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Your your journey has shaped you into a man who is fun, who loves life, who appreciates the Boy. struggle, the journey. You can tell you appreciate the journey to Dude, where man. you're at, brother. I, I cannot wait to see great things continue to happen in your life, man. I, I really can't. It's all Deserve it's a joy it. to watch you. And it's really cool to see how you interact with other people and the good vibes you give out there in the universe, man. Thank you so much for taking time. Oh, man, to, thank to you guys so, so much for having me on the AEW Dynamite download, man. SPD, Crayfish, you guys are dope. This is one of my favorite interviews. I had so much fun. Thank Thanks, you. man. Go on record and say to all your listeners, there'll never be another interview this good. I'm sorry. <laughs> you set the bar. <laughs> you did. Bro. I'm super grateful for hopping on this, man. I hope we get to do it again. Once Thanks. again, Twitter, Instagram at Danny Limelight. ProWrestlingTees.com backslash Danny Limelight. Cameo.com backslash Danny Limelight. Follow my daughter on Instagram at Lisi Rivera, L-E-E-S-I-R-I-V-E-R-A. Watch her journey because she's seven years old. She had to pay taxes this year because how much money she made last year. Woo! Break a generational cycles around here. Good much love you, me until next time. Thank you so much. We'll leave all that in the chat in the comments Thank below, you. man. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Danny. Be easy, bro. Take care.